chest malaria, dengue, encephalitis, and yellow fever. Reptorial legs! Ah, imagine eating strawberry flavored cockroaches. Mmm, yummy. Alright, let's put it this way. All vertebrates that have legs come with claws. Why don't frogs? Can you imagine a frog leg without any toes? Wooden ants, dragon ants, killer bees, Asian giant hornets, many spiders and squirrels. The second deadliest is humans ourselves, and the third comes snakes. Then baby fireflies are conceived because you learn to appreciate different creatures. Good for you. Hello everyone, I'm Tony Kingston from Jurassic Garage. Hong Kong teachers and parents, how's it going during school closures? It must be a hard time, but don't worry, we've got your back. If you have anything about animals and nature, do drop us a line. We will keep reaching out to you in here until schools reopen, and then we can meet you again. All right. So this video is for Bernice Chen from French International School, Hong Kong. Hi, Bernice. How are you doing? We miss you so much. We have got the message from you. So there are 15 questions, all about bugs, from Charlie Ray, Michael, Yuan, King Han. Isabel Plunkett, Smera, Nico Cantner, Valerie, and Leo. Let's see whose question comes first. So, so Charlie Ray has two questions for me. The first one is, why tarantulas don't make webs? Most spiders spin webs to capture their prey, but tarantulas, as well as larger spiders, do not spin webs. They are powerful enough to capture their own prey by biting with their huge fangs that inject venom. However, they do produce silk from their spinnerets. The silk is used to make the nest. Some heavier tarantulas even put a little bit of silk on their feet when they're climbing up vertical surfaces. The second question from Charlie Ray is, why do ladybugs eat the small bugs on the crops farmers grow? Well, it's because those are what they eat. Most species of ladybugs prey on small herbivorous bugs such as aphids and scale insects, which are considered agricultural pests. Many ladybugs even lay their eggs directly in aphid and scale insect colonies in order to ensure their babies have an immediate food source. Michael has two questions for me. The first one is, why does firefly glow in the dark? Male fireflies glow to attract females. There are more than 2,000 species of fireflies. A male firefly will light up its abdomen at a particular rate of wavelength. And when a female sees a male of her own species shining in that particular way, she will respond with her own light. Then, baby fireflies are conceived. Another reason fireflies glow is to lure prey. Some females will glow to lure a male to her and then devour him. The second question from Michael is, why can an ant carry heavy stuff? Well, sometimes the smaller, the stronger. Ants can lift up to 5,000 times their own body weight. They can lift so much because of the ratio between their body size and body mass. The smaller size means they do not have a large body mass, and the proportion of their mass that is muscle is very high. As a result, they're able to lift weights that are so many times heavier than their own body weight. The question from Iwan is, what is the most dangerous bug? Bugs are small, but many are deadly. Fire ants, bullet ants, driver ants, killer bees, Asian giant hornets, many spiders and scorpions, just to name a few. You really don't want to be bit or stung by any of these. I have been stung by some of these. It hurt a lot. But I was lucky I survived. 
So I wouldn't call any of these the most dangerous. There is this tiny, teeny, weeny little bug which I'm sure everyone has got bit by. I would call it the number one most dangerous bug in the world. Yes, I'm talking about the mosquito. You should be just fine if you get mosquito bites in Hong Kong, but in Africa and South America, where I often go to, the mosquitoes could transmit deadly diseases such as malaria, dengue, encephalitis, and yellow fever. The mosquito is not only the bug, but the animal that kills the most humans in the world. The second deadliest is humans ourselves, and the third comes snakes. But mosquitoes kill more than double of the both combined. Who could imagine the smallest would be the deadliest? So King Han has two questions for me. The first one is, Every time we left the terrace door open in the evening, a little bug of different species would come and stay on our wall without much moving the whole night. Why is it so, and what are they doing? Maybe your terrace has a nice view, doesn't it? But some bugs are attracted to light, so they might want to come into your house. Bugs need three main things, food, water, and shelter. If it's not moving the whole night, it's probably staying in your house as a shelter. The second question from King Harness, we learned that some bugs are beneficial, like bees and earthworms, but some are harmful, like cockroaches. Why do those bad bugs survive for so long? Do they make any contribution? There are heroes and there are feelings. I guess it's not always the heroes that live till the end, isn't it? King Han, thanks for asking me this. I think this is a great question that most people have in mind. I love the fact that you care about contribution. Beneficial bugs are like heroes. They definitely contribute a lot. Everybody knows, so I'm not going to talk about them now. So harmful bugs, or what you call bad bugs. Bad bugs, not bad bugs. But I know, you know. Bad bugs are bad bugs. Anyways, most people call it a vermin or a pest. Any bug that is harmful to humans, to humans. Remember, it's from a human's point of view. But if you can think out of the box, it can be the other way around. Such as your example, cockroaches. Everyone thinks roaches are dirty, but the fact is the opposite. Roaches clean themselves more often than most other bugs. What if I tell you roaches don't make your place dirty? It's most likely the leftover food crumbs in your place that attract roaches. They are actually professional cleaners, like janitors at schools. Look, imagine, dirtier schools will have to hire more janitors. Only 25 to 30 species of roaches are considered vermin. There are 4,000 other species of roaches that live in the wild and contribute to ecosystem services. Number one, roaches are scavengers, chowing down just about anything, including dead plants, animals, and animal waste before they get rotten and generate more bacteria. Number two, the waste of roaches is a great fertilizer. It nourishes growing plants. Number three, they are food. Roaches are surprisingly nutritious and a very good source of protein, better than most of the meat. Many smaller predators, such as birds, reptiles, amphibians, and small mammals rely on eating them as primary prey, just like our lizards, frogs, tarantulas, and even hedgehogs. They love roaches we bred in here. We feed our roach colonies on high-quality vegetables and fruits so that they get loaded with all the nutrients. Ah! Imagine eating strawberry-flavored cockroaches. Mmm, yum! Next question is from Isabel Plunkett. Do bugs sleep? How long for? 
The fact is, it's really hard to tell. Bugs have no eyelids and can't close their eyes. Even when sleeping, they keep their eyes open. But they do take rest. When taking rest, a bug will be staying still and not be so aroused by stimuli. The state of deep rest is called torpor. Different bugs have very different sleeping patterns. Some bugs sleep for 8 to 10 hours, just like humans. But when some bugs are in their pupil stage, they can be sleeping for months or even for years before they wake up a whole new insect. The next question is from Smera. Why do ladybugs have spots? And how many spots do ladybugs have? Did you know that there are about 5,000 different species of ladybugs in the world? Some ladybugs have more spots, some have fewer, some even don't have any spots at all. They can have anywhere from 0 to 24 spots. The spots of ladybug are a warning to predators. It's called aposematism. It's like telling predators that I am poisonous. Don't eat me. From Nico Cantoner, do spiders have teeth? What about other bugs? Some bugs, like grasshoppers and crickets, have something like teeth called mandibles that can chew plants. Spiders cannot chew or swallow, so how do you think they eat? They can only eat liquid foods. To do this, they inject the prey with venom using their pair of fangs. Would you like to take a look at the fangs? The glossy black things in the middle are the fangs. When the spider is in defense mode, the fangs will stick out, and they are a lot longer than what you're seeing. Some larger tarantula's fangs can be up to one and a half inches long. Huge, need a shot, and can inject venom. Woohoo! I've been beat a couple times. It hurts! The next question is from Valerie. Why are bugs not yucky? What is the difference between praying mantis and grasshopper? You think bugs are not yucky because you learned to appreciate different creatures. Good for you, Valerie! Mantises and grasshoppers are both insects but belong to different orders. Grasshoppers are more closely related to locusts and crickets. They are herbivores, they eat plants. Mantises are more closely related to cockroaches and termites. They are ambush predators. They sit and wait for their prey. They eat bugs and other small animals by using their special pair of front legs, which grasshoppers don't have. Guess what? Those legs have a cool name. Raptorial legs! Alright, Leo has four questions for me. The first one is, what do flies eat? There are many flies in the world. Fruit flies feed on sugary foods like candies, and of course sweet fruits like bananas, grapes, peaches, apples. They drink wine and beer too. House flies are general feeders, which means they will just eat anything from our foods to dead animals, to feces. Ew. But the way they eat is even more disgusting. Their mouth part is like a sponge and a straw, so they can only suck up liquids. When they land on solid food, they will form it out of a mix of saliva and stomach acid, 
which has digestive enzymes that turns a solid meal into a soup. The second question from Leo is, how are ladybugs and flies born, from eggs or from a cocoon? The life cycles of both ladybugs and flies go through complete metamorphosis. It means they go through all four stages, the egg stage, the larva stage, the pupa stage, and the adult stage. The word cocoon is mostly for pupa stage of a moth. For the butterfly, it's called chrysalis. For other insects, it's just called pupa. The third question from Leo is, how do ladybugs and spiders eat? Do they have a mouth? The answer is, yes, they have a mouth. Both ladybugs and spiders are predators. Ladybugs eat small bugs like aphids and scale insects. They don't just eat them. They will also lay eggs on them to make sure baby ladybugs have their food ready when born. Spiders can eat much bigger prey. They either spin a web to catch their prey, or like tarantulas, catch their own prey by biting on them. The last question from Leo is, why do frogs have fingers? Well, I guess all vertebrates have fingers or toes. Maybe except snakes, fish, legless lizards, and Sicilians. All right, let's put it this way. All vertebrates that have legs come with claws. Why don't frogs? Can you imagine a frog leg without any toes? Mm. Mm. Oh, I know you can. But let's just go back to science. The claws are very important to all different species of frogs. Tree frogs have sticky toe pads that can help them stick on smooth surfaces like tree trunks and even underside of a wet leaf. Aquatic frogs have webbed toes to help them swim. When a frog eats a prey that is too big to swallow, they will use their fingers to push their foot in their mouth. Alrighty, that's all the answers for all 15 very, very good questions from you. So, you can see, it's dark now. We've been filming day to night. We've been filming from dusk till dawn. We've been filming from dusk till dawn. We hope you like it. We've been filming from dusk till dawn. We hope you like it. Peace!